you you can solve a problem of an object falling two different ways. You can do energy considerations or you can use force and acceleration considerations, but you don't mix the two up. For example, <laughs> you've lost them. If if you have um say a say you have uh something of a mass, say a kilogram mass at 10 meters. How did it get there? Okay, it has a potential energy with respect to the earth. Let's say your your zero potential energy data is going to be the surface. How did it of the get earth. to 10 meters? How did it get there? Well, I'm saying magic again. The, no, I'm get saying where they are by magic. And then well, we do our well, kind let of me explain from it. Point well, let me, we'll let them go through it and then and then um try to debunk it afterwards. Yeah, George. Okay. Say you have a kilogram mass, it's resting on the earth. You lift it up, you're, you're lifting it up against the force of gravity, so you're imparting a potential energy to it. The potential energy, say if that object, that one kilogram mass is raised uh, one meter, it'll be mgh mass times gravitational acceleration. Oh, you don't have to eight. put no gravitation in there, buddy. Whoa, where are you going with this? I, I don't mind well, listening, but when you what... elaborate bullshit as thick and as deep as you're going, someone has to say STFU and get it straight. If no, you want that, to ignore look your it, I'm just trying to tell you how, okay, how, how do you calculate? Mass, I don't care how high oh. and ignore your participation. You're imposter. You're are you saying you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you're a liar? And James, you're James. Tell me what, how James. much energy is in an object when you lift it up. I'm telling you how you calculate. When a body James. is at rest, it's at rest, and when James. you pick it up, you give it potential energy. <laughs> James, how do you how do you calculate potential energy? I well, okay, we you have what know. we call torque mm -hmm. and foot pound seconds. If you move 750 pounds one foot in one second, you've expended one horsepower. So no, I don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't. Then why is it back down? 550 pounds. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> but in any case, uh, if you want okay. to ignore that you have a mic in your hand, it's that you it's give weight. it potential energy, and when you drop it, you are responsible for that force, the action, and everything until that body gets to rest again. But you, you want know, to say, he, no, it's not me. There's more force in it than I gave it, and gravity is the culprit. No, why an can't idiot with a microphone in, in his hand with a disease called imposterism is, is, is guilty James, of could you just What's could the you equation? quit being so rude, James, and just, rude. Let it's just and explain fact. something without... If you want to rule yourself out of your participation in a, quote, experiment, force, mask, acceleration, downward problem then you're an imposter and you're lying I'm oh what a day what a lovely day welcome to flat earth debate I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. Most importantly though, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Was Not Was, <clears throat> Sleeping Warrior, Milo, Mark Doxy, Jose, Lewis Hackett, James, George, and Chocolate Saying, good to have you all. Hello. I'm Nathan. Hello, folks. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Let's make this a great show. Let's speak and let's speak. Let's make it, make it calm and nice. <laughs> 
Um, so get, yeah, George. Keep okay. Going. Say you have a kilogram mass sitting on the earth and you raise it up 10 meters. Okay. The potential energy that's imparted to that object is its weight through the distance that you move it up, which is the same. Well, what is weight? Weight is the mass times gravitational acceleration. If you don't like the use of gravity, fine. We'll just use weight. The weight of the object moved through a distance is ignores the weight energy is a force. Used. Seems to ignore force the, acting sorry, through a, George, it seems to ignore the part where you physically exert energy to take it up 10 meters. You seem to have completely ignored that. Nathan, what? You, I haven't you, ignored anything. I'm saying... Nathan, you, Nathan you, don't, you don't know how to calculate for potential energy. So why don't you let people that do know talk? Well, he's seemingly ignoring the fact Wait. that you have to exert energy to get it up to 10 meters. No, I mean, I have to but, but what you, I'm telling you what it is. But, but what, what you're ignoring is that you don't even energy. know how much potential energy is in an object when you raise it up. So maybe somebody else can explain. You're saying how much no, potential energy, energy is in something when that, I raise it up. And I'm saying I actually have to exert energy to raise it up in the first place. And you're saying it is the force that gravity has resisted against. And I'm saying it's the force that I've put into it when I exerted energy right. to move it 10 meters. But, but you don't know how much force you're... I don't need to. Even... I know I exerted energy. And you're ignoring that. That's my point. I don't need to calculate it. I know instinctively that if I pick up a bag of bricks and take it to the top of the Empire State Building, I have exerted quite a lot of energy. You don't know how much energy you've exerted onto I know I've exerted so... some, and you're ignoring that fact. No, you're, I'm ignoring not ignoring how much you, Nathan, you're ignoring Nathan. how much energy you're even putting into the object. So No, I'm, I'm not ignoring that, Nathan. I'm saying the potential energy of the object is equal to the amount of energy that you put in, the effort that you're putting in, the work that you put in to lifting that object up, say, 10 meters, is, becomes its potential energy at that point. Right. And then when you release okay. it, you release you that with potential. That? And then when you release it, it releases that potential energy, correct? That's right. The potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Excellent. So there's no need for any gravity in this. That's the end of that explanation then, right? No. <laughs> no. No? But we've just had a full cause and effect. We inserted energy and then we released it. What's What, no, what you, more do we need? You, you cut them off at a, at a spot where you agreed and then... You're going to disagree with the rest of what he has to say. Well, so maybe we've got a cause and effect. I inserted energy, yeah, Milo, guys, and then I I'll released it. Later, I got to go to bed. I've been up all night. So oh. does anybody know the equation for potential energy? What goes up must come down. No, that's not an equation. <laughs> well, what goes up must come down. I put energy into something, and then when I let go of it, it's released back towards its equilibrium. There's no further Except, explanation needed. Are you what, why do we need any... Why do we need any further force? I've given it its energy. Are you deaf? Is uh, do you know what uh, how much energy you you put into this object? Yeah, about the same number of steps as you go up when you walk up it. That's how much energy, and then that was released. Mm. All of that energy that I put into that item, but there's no gravity you know, required. Nate, there's no maths required. Yeah. I put energy in know, and then release the energy. Simple. You know, Nathan. Uh, if you don't know something, you could just say you don't know. I do know. I pick up an item, put energy into it by moving it upwards, then I release that energy that I put into it. That's the end. How much energy? How much energy? There's however you much energy know. I put in, equal to, it gets released when I drop it. There's no requirement okay. for gravity at all. So if, I, so if I'm a five pound brick from 10 feet, how much energy is that? Who cares? It doesn't matter mathematically. There's no requirement for gravity. We understand that I have inserted energy into the brick. Then I release it when I drop it. That's it. End so of you, story. So you, you just want you just want to ignore how much energy you've put into it while also what saying that make? the energy that you've put into it is is why the thing is falling? Yeah, yeah because I released that. it. Yes, because I released the potential energy that I put into it. That is exactly the reason why. Had I have not put that energy in by taking it upwards, it wouldn't have fell down. Nathan, he's just asked you, are you why are you prepared to ignore the energy that's going into it? But that's Nathan's point yeah. that's been turned against him and he's not realised. So, exactly. So now I want him to tell me how much energy is being put into an object at a certain height. But, right. Without knowing the, the particulars for the equation, how would, he, you, how would you expect him to do that? You need to know the particulars to even form these, this argument. Let's say, a number. let's say he gets a number and let's say it's 12, right? Mm-hmm. Are you going to take that 12 off the sum for it being dropped again? 
Does the 12 explain why it's falling at a certain rate? If because it does, he changed it to rate. So it started off with why it's falling. Now it's the rate it falls at. Double speaking so how asshole. Do you... Double speaking I... asshole. Now how do you calculate for potential energy? Who cares? I... We know we're putting potential energy in. And then we release that energy. There is no requirement for gravity. I know Nathan doesn't know how to calculate for potential energy. Maybe Anthony knows. Do you? Well, it's in the chat box. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I just but want sorry, them to... I was making a cup of I was making a cup of coffee, right? Potential oh, energy is calculated with that little word called gravity in it, right? Okay, so to try to do it without it. So I lift a brick, I let go of it. That's the result of the sum. No, you no, can no, put no. Whatever numbers in there you want, but Nathan, no, you, right. don't, you, you can't. Lift, no, no, no. When you lift the brick, you are charging it with an energy source because yeah, you're using you're... your energy. How do you, how do you calculate for potential energy? Who cares? You're well, the question gravity. is, when you're lifting the brick, what are you lifting it against? Yeah, you're using right. your own energy to lift it, and you're charging the brick with the potential energy. Nathan's right. Who cares yeah. what the size? But if an well, object in motion stays in motion, why is it what going back to the opposite direction that you're forcing it up you're against? Ignoring how it got in motion. So did the brick just spontaneously fly into the air, Lewis? No, you guys are ignoring. No, no, no your name's not Lewis. Lewis, did that brick spontaneously fly into the air, or did someone have to pick it up and throw it? Uh, it would stay in the direction that it's being. Uh... The force is directing. Okay, you're starting again. You're ignoring the bit where somebody picks that brick up and throws it. You like to start with it in motion and then cause no, and then blame the reason why it comes back down as gravity. You ignore the fact that someone's picked it up and chucked it and you just say, well, the object's in motion already. Let's start with the balloon at the top of the at the bottom of the pool. Let's start with the feather at the top of the chamber. Let's simultaneously ignore the fact that someone's had to drag it to the bottom of the pool. Or take it to yeah. the top of the chamber. You ignore that. The bricks just no, already flying. Going. Bricks Don't. just simultaneously, spontaneously fly into the air. And then we start measuring them when they're in motion. Don't we, lads? No. People yeah. pick bricks up and throw them. That's how they get into motion. Yes, Nathan, I'll, 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 exactly. ask, I'll ask for the uh, fifth time. How do you calculate for potential energy? Who cares? There's no gravity involved whatsoever when I pick something up and put potential energy into it. Yeah? Maybe, maybe somebody else has an answer. Mm. Look, if, if I've got an we were answer, able bro. to calculate the matter. potential energy, it doesn't, it, what the doesn't matter what gravity the It matters. No, it doesn't. How, 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 how are you planning on proving anything? Principle. It's the same as the maths for 7, 6, R for refraction. We know no, that refraction goes a bump, right? But you guys still like to calculate for it, and we don't accept it. But you've got a mathematical equation with the word gravity in it, and we don't accept no. that. Well, if you, if you, if you guys don't mind, I'd just like to make one point, and then uh, I won't talk for the rest of the time. I just haven't, I haven't even got to say it yet, but you guys keep bringing it up. You guys keep saying that you have to start with the ball at the top of the pool, yet the, something's pushing it down or something's pulling up a weight. That's what I'm saying to you. This force, and that's what Milo is trying to get you guys to uh, look at when you look at the equation for it. This force, this force that's bringing down the ball through the water, that's fighting against the buoyancy, you have to remember that these are two forces. One is the potential energy that you're creating, but one is the force that is uh, trying to make the ball come back up. Right. And the same so thing when you're, you holding, when, when you're, when you're question, holding a weight, when you lift a brick up off the ground, you're going against another force. Well, in the uh, same force way that's... That, James, in the same way I ask Arwin to prove that force when he's talking about the downward acceleration force, I'm going to ask you to prove that there's a force. There's two forces. One that is the potential, which we know about. But then there's the other force that you guys are putting into the potential energy, which is the gravitational bit. How are you going to show that there's a, both forces on that one item? Because I'm asserting That's there's only the one. Anthony, because there's no potential energy if there isn't an opposite. No. If there isn't a there's force no that you're acting energy. against. There's no, no potential that's easy. energy that's a easy. swimmer. Okay, yeah. Like I was saying, whenever you um, ba – basically the way Newton's laws work is if you put a force, a, a, a force against something like the brick holding it up, you wouldn't have to constantly be pulling it up. You would just be able. You would just have to push it once, and would go in that direction if there wasn't another force. But since there's a constant exactly. force going in the opposite direction, you have to constantly be yeah, not only lifting it higher, here's but the still holding it in place. Here's the thing that you're missing, right? We're saying that the swimmer is one force and only one force, but you're saying the swimmer and another force equals the, the brick going, the bottle going down. And we're saying, but there's no, there's no evidence of this other force of which you speak. Anthony, there is. Anthony, math, math, no, acceleration. only mathematically. No, Anthony, mass acceleration can only happen in mass. force. 
No, no it could reality. only happen in maths. Yeah, can you give me an example of a mass accelerating with no force? Yeah. This is the my ball. cue to chime in. The, the ball Go ahead, Anthony. on the swimming pool. Go ahead, uh, Jose. Well, hang on. You right. just missed my answer. Hang okay. on. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. You missed my answer. You asked me for an example of a force, uh, an object moving without a force. The bottle at the bottom of the swimming pool, when you let go of it, all by itself moves. That's we've sad. already explained. We've already explained the forces. Um, no, you've calculated in it that. in maths, and I've asked you to demonstrate the difference between the two forces that you claim against the one force that we all see, observe, and admit to and accept. So, where's the second force? Anthony, other, other, than, other than in maths. Anthony, the fact that we could, the fact that we could predict what's going to happen when you um, bring the bottom at the bottom of the ocean and let it go, is testament to the fact that we know what forces are involved. So is it a scientific if you, if, prediction if, or if it's if a, a mystic make prediction? I'm asking you to prove two things, right? If you said that you had a red Ferrari on the drive and I asked you to prove it, you'd go and take a picture of the red Ferrari and present it on proof, right? And you in the picture, right? I'm asking you to prove the gravity. You're saying there's two forces and I'm saying there's only one. Where's the second force and how are you going to prove it other than in maths? Anthony, well, in order to... Water down. Exactly. And, in in yeah, order to... Bringing the water down, the other force, the buoyant force, is just a derivative of both things being pulled down and the water displacing the much lighter thing, which is the ball. So you're just asserting the exact same thing like a circle jerk asshole. You haven't addressed this point. You've just said there's two forces again. There is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're just reasserting that. He's saying prove the second force, you complete dumbass. The, the yeah, proof what? is that... Don't just say there is. Don't just say there is a second force. Here we go. This is how we calculate it. Prove it. Yeah, yeah. the... the... The proof is that if we eliminate any of the forces involved, then the then brick doesn't you, go down. The brick doesn't go up in the first place, and the, 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 the bottle doesn't, doesn't go down. Exactly. So if right. you eliminate you any of the, it then, can you? If, if you eliminate any of the forces, then you cannot even begin to predict if. the motion that that uh, you should see. Yeah, well, they predicted that they would calculate stuff on the uh, called super deep borehole with seismograph um, predictions. No, the, the, they got listen. It the wrong way around, didn't they? Listen, Anthony, the reason that we can predict how fast an object will go if you lift it up a certain distance and drop it, the, the reason why we know this is because the calculations involved are correct. Right. So mathematically, if you eliminate... Mathematically, maybe. But I'm, again, I'm really... No, mathematically, said, yes. Listen, mathematically, that is proof. I'm asking you to prove that you've got a red Ferrari on your drive and you're coming back with a mathematical yeah. formula to prove that there's a red Ferrari on your drive. I want to see the Ferrari. So no. if you can't prove the force of gravity without maths, then you ain't got yes. any evidence, mate. So You've just got this maths. Is, this is the proof. If you eliminate gravity from any of these equations, then you cannot predict the motions. That's nonsense. He's just said that's just a mathematical evidence, saying that I, if I remove the bit called gravity from my equation, my equation don't work. We're not living in an equation. Exactly. We want actual observed phenomena demonstrations of gravity not your mathematics and the way it breaks down if you remove your concept of Forget gravity that's the same argument try and figure out why it's doing that and we can take out gravity try to figure out why a pool the water in the pool is displacing the basketball there's no science for it. Without... No science. it's displacing it because it's less buoyant and it's only there in the first place because somebody's forced it down there yeah, so why is the water or the ball, either of them, why are they being forced downward? No, they're not. The person is forcing the ball downward. You idiot. Yeah, it is. If yeah, you take away the water and you... No, no, not the water. The person. The person is forcing the ball through the water. The person's doing that. And we can the... prove that, right? Yeah. And we all agree yeah. that the person... Yeah, so we can agree that the cause of the ball getting to there, to the point where it's under the water, not before... Not when it's already there. That's a person that has caused that to happen. Let, let me let me try this again. So you guys are saying that the potential energy is the reason for all things falling. No, the potential energy in this case okay. is the reason for the displacement. Okay, so how do you calculate for potential energy? Who cares? You, you're applying a gravitational force in there, aren't you? No, Anthony, the thing is that it's not who cares. You, no. You're claiming this. You're, you're claiming this as fact. No, 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 no. You're claiming this as fact, so you should know, right? Right. What you're so, doing. So tell me. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. So tell me, since you know this as a fact, how do you calculate for potential energy? Or, are, oh wait, oh hold up, I'm not done. 
or are you saying that things act unpredictably? Let's go back to the original definition of science. No, 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 Wait, no, no. How about you answer my question? Wait, no, hang on. Wait, let me finish. You're trying to move on. I want you no, to answer I'm my not, question. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm staying on this point, but let me finish no, the point. No, I asked you a question. I know, and let me answer it by asking you this back. No, if, it's if no science, It's no question. Questions don't answer science. questions. If, questions listen, don't answer questions. Listen, if science is the observation of the natural world, what part of the dr the, br the brick dropping or the bottle going up is the natural world if you're claiming that there's a force there which you can't naturally observe, uh, evidence, or anything other than calculate for? Anthony, how do you naturally observe a force? Well, in math, you would calculate it, right? No, so I, I have this world, baby here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In the real world, you get a swimmer, in the you world, you get a swimmer to take the bottle down to the bottom of the swimming pool and let go of it and watch what happens. Okay, right. Milo, Milo, so hold on. Yeah, predict, give me one second, give me one second. I just want to throw a comment out here. Hold on one second. So yeah, I there's, a, I'm just going to do a quick analogy. Just give me 30 seconds. There's an apple on the table. I grab the apple. If I don't put a lot of pressure on it, I won't be able to pick it up. If I put too much pressure, I might explode it and break it. If I grab it just right, I pick it up off the table. Do I need a mathematical equation to explain that? Or I just grab the apple? lift it up exactly. and eat it right of course you can explain that mathematically by 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 uh describing i can explain how much it mathematically force. but yes. if i cannot so explain it mathematically it doesn't it make it real it's real building... because it happens i don't need a mathematical equation for it that's what we try yeah. to, to lay the, no. building the hold up, hold up. Hold up. let me let me tell jose a... let me tell jose something the problem is that we can explain it mathematically, Jose. You're trying yeah. to say that we can't, but we can. So yeah, the fact that we can. I'm not trying to say wait, you can't. I'm trying to so say reality, wait, wait, reality and fact is Milo. it happens. Milo, what you yeah, doing? Yeah, it happens, and we can explain it happens. how it happens. Listen, and we can predict, Milo, we can predict Milo, the outcomes. Listen, what, what you're doing mathematically is the same as what I, the example I give with the ice creams. If you have two ice creams, no. I can't take five off you and lead you with minus three. But that's of what you're doing you with the maths. You, the person that you that has minus three apples owes you three apples. No, you can't have minus three apples. You have zero. And what really? You're doing have, have, you ever had, have you ever had negative dollars in your bank account? Right. That's not, you've got, if you've got uh, negative... Uh, 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 if you've got negative do uh, dollars in your bank account... Uh, 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 what does that mean? Zero. Tell, try to tell... Exactly. Try to you have zero. can't have an IOU in science. You either Wait. have... Try to, tell the, try to tell the bank that you don't owe it money. That's not. No, there's a, there's a number in there. There's a number in there, but you don't have minus money. You have zero Correct. money. Of course, yeah. you have minus money. You have negative you have money. You, you have, have a debt. debt. Exactly. But so, in real, so, in, so in science, you don't have so debt. That, that breaks up already. It in science, yeah, you don't have a debt. That's exactly you, what it is. Can you demonstrate anywhere in science where an IOU is presented in in, in any part of any equation? Potential energy. Right, but potential not energy. That's not an IOU. What are you talking about? That's not an IOU. Not an IOU. Potential energy. Why are you I'm bringing up is. IOU? IOU, IOU pertains <laughs> to banks and money, but we're not talking. We're, well, that was an example. Brought in banks. Yeah, that was an example of having negative dollars. And yeah, but it, it doesn't happen real. in real world, does it? So you're telling me that's not real world? That's fake world? Yeah. Try to tell the bank world, that's fake. fake money. Yeah, that's mathematics. So that mathematics isn't the real world. That's his point with ice creams. If he owes you an ice cream, he hasn't physically got minus ice creams. That's the point. You can't have a minus well, well, value of a physical thing like ice cream. You've either got two ice creams, three ice creams, no. four ice creams. That's how many ice creams you've got. A you, negative you, number you, never will exist of ice creams. Yeah, you can right. quantify that and say you owe me an ice cream, but there isn't exactly. an existence of a negative number of ice creams. Yeah, it's just something you can say in maths. But no one is saying that a negative number is represented by a physical thing. You are. You're saying your mathematical concept of what gravity is makes it a real thing because it works in your mathematics. Yeah. Where, where do you see that? Where, where have we said that? In the gravity. That's what you've exactly said. If I remove gravity from my equation, then gravity doesn't work. So what? No, it's just yeah, a maths equation. No, no, no. no. And none if of it you, works. No, yeah, you, yeah, but you're work. presupposing that curve again, that radius, by putting in gravity, no, right? Listen, no, because the gravity exists whether we live on a flat Earth or but a You can't Wilbur. prove it's a force. You understand? You can't yes, prove you can. it. You can't prove it. That was the first time he said, yes, you can, it. It. Yes, you can prove it. it. Hold on. You can prove what? that it causes things to fall. So it's a cause and effect relationship. So you can prove it. 
you'd prove that with science. So what's the scientific yeah. evidence for gravity? Well, like you Things said, there falls, is a force going down. Earth. Things fall, fall to, towards Earth. Things cannot move without a force. That's the observation. Things to fall towards the ground once you give them kinetic energy, uh, potential energy. But the potential well, energy does not explain the direction and the rate of fall. So, so it's not because of potential energy. Explain of course, how gravity causes that. You understand? Yeah, no, understand? I understand your concept. Now I'm asking you to scientifically validate no, it you, with scientific evidence. Understand. So what is your scientific sense. evidence for gravity? Let me tell you something. You don't understand because you keep bringing up potential energy as if potential energy is completely divorced from gravity. A cause? No, a cause of things being risen up in the air and then released. They release their potential energy. The potential en energy you gave them when you took them up to the top of the Empire State Building. Yeah? Now we're asking you for your scientific evidence of gravity. So what is your evidence? Potential energy. Not potential energy, gravity. We're talking potential energy. <laughs> you are talking gravity. So what's no, your yeah. scientific evidence for gravity? If you're well, talking potential energy... You're no, we're not. You're talking gravity. We are talking potential energy. So I want you to justify the other force you say is involved. We know potential energy is involved. Listen, listen, you cannot divorce potential energy from gravity. Yes, you can. You can say that's the cause. I put potential energy in. You're just tagging on gravity because of a maths equation. What? Okay, that's the cause. Potential Hang energy on. is the cause. Yeah, I caused something to be taken up to the top level of the building and then caused it to drop by releasing its potential energy. Yes. You caused the cause. I caused it to increase its potential energy by carrying it to the top of a building. Yes. So is potential energy the effect or the cause? Potential energy is the energy it had and then it was released. It's not the cause of anything. The potential energy Potent was given to the item and then released when I opened my hand. It's very straightforward. Do you understand that you cannot have potential energy without gravity? Yeah, I do understand. And now I'm asking you to scientifically validate Great. your assertion that Great. you need gravity. I don't need gravity. I've just explained it without using the gravity word once. No, I've said that he, I insert... He, 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 now you're talking over me, Milo. Shut up. I don't need gravity to explain that I can take something to the top of a building. You're saying it must be gravity. Now I'm asking you to scientifically validate that assertion. What's your scientific because evidence for gravity? You cannot simultaneously say potential energy and deny gravity i'm denying gravity and saying it's potential energy there you go i've done just that if you want to disagree then you need to scientifically validate the gravity part bring up the Someone spring, up that, was a, that, spring. Was, that, that was a good that was a good example go ahead spring. yeah press a compressed spring between my thumb and forefinger and I, I let go that's nothing to do with gravity I now what uh -huh. i put potential energy love... into, into the spring no, please let me uh yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to say potential energy doesn't only have to do with gravity, but the example that you're giving is exactly at the point that I'm trying to make, that to no, describe you're... potential energy, you it's need said, two though. forces. It's you need two said. forces. It's not what you said, though, is it? No, it is what I said. I said Wait, potential you know, energy is always yes described. No. I got a yes or no question. James, let me... Let me I got a yes or no question. A quick question. I got a yes or no question. A really no. quick one. Let's say you win, you win this whole argument, Milo. Let's win. Let's say, yes, gravity is real. Yes, this is what's happening. Is this going to be... The con is the conclusion going to be the Earth is a sphere? Yes or no? That's, no. That's not what I'm trying to get to a point. I'm, I'm trying to get you guys to a point. Because this that. is about the shape of the Earth. Then what's your point? Because we're talking about gravity. We can move on after if you want to. But since we're talking about gravity, we're talking about gravity. My point is that gravity exists whether we live on a flat Earth, a square Earth, a, a, sp a spiral Earth, a donut Earth, or a round Earth. It doesn't matter. Gravity exists. There's a force pulling us down. But well, you can't prove it. Can't yes, I can. Because you can only prove it in maths. If, if you take Pull gravity... Pull you down to where? To the center of the Earth? <laughs> can, we predict, it. can we predict the trajectory of objects? Yes or no? Milo, I don't have a, a, an issue with you on, on what, you're, what you just said there. It makes no difference to the shape of the Earth. Who's talking right now? I'm sorry. Ma I'm, I'm Mark. Hi, hi, Milo. Okay. How you doing, Mark? So with your, with your spring example, you're pressing the spring down. So your thumb is acting against a force. Yes or no? You don't, you don't need to uh, uh, do the Socratic method with me. I, I don't have an opinion on gravity. I do have an opinion on the shape of the Earth, though. 
So do you accept gravity or do you just, are you just um, agnostic? <laughs> The thing about gravity that I do not accept was when I was at school, I was taught that if you had a, a cannon powerful enough and it fired a cannonball and you fired it up, uh, with enough force, it would go around the earth and keep going in an orbit. I don't accept yeah. that part of gravity. Well, well, I well think, of it, think of it, think of it like this. Simply. Think of it like this. If you were to throw a ball um, perfectly straight, you would see it um, go straight and then arc down till it hit the ground, right? Well, that's what I observed, yes. So imagine throwing it uh, a thousand times harder. You would see the same effect, no? You, you would see it go straight and then arc down, right? Yes. So and imagine throwing that ball a million times harder. Eventually, yeah, but, but it won't hit the earth. It, it'll just keep it'll keep with that um, curve down, and it'll just pretty much orbit the earth. That I, is I, 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 no, 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 no. Hang on, folks. Really? But, but I, f I feel like we're going to move on from, from the gravity point. And um, orbit, I, I want to get, wanna, wanna, wanna get earth, back to that. Hang on. No, no. Orbit the earth means that it, that it has to be a, a globe. And that's what I would contest. So the, the we, we, we could go back to gravity. The, we could go back to gravity. It would be that it just lands in Australia. Or it just lands in the water beyond Australia. Or it goes yeah. like further and further and further. And it's the ice wall. So there is an ice wall now. Yeah, there's a no, point I... where the sun could no longer melt the water, the ice. Yes. So where is the ice wall located? It's at the point where the sun can no longer melt the ice. Is that the perimeter <laughs> of the earth? I don't know what it is. It's just the point where the sun can no longer melt the ice. But that would be the outside yeah. edges of the earth, no? From our perspective, perhaps. And is it round? I don't know. So, does, the, does, the, does the sun travel in Anthony, a circle above us? Anthony, the thing is that when you, you can see measure it. it the thing is that when you say things like this, you've already created a parameter to your model. No, I haven't. I've just regurgitated your science back to you. We know that the sun can't melt the ice at a certain angle and a certain distance away. So why uh, do you reject that? No, you, you just brought up an ice wall. So I didn't. I brought up science that says that the sun can only melt the ice at so, like, so far away. Okay, so there is no ice wall. I don't know. I haven't been there. Okay. I just know that there's a point where the sun can no longer melt the ice. Okay, and and then what? Where are you assuming the ice, uh, the sun to be, to do I'm that? Not assuming anything. I just know that there's a point that the sun can no longer melt the ice. That's it. End of sentence. Great. End of sentence. Right. Great. <laughs> if you're not going to claim that it's an ice wall, then okay. That's nice. <laughs> not claim I claim the potential energy is the only do so much. reason that things fall. So 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 potential energy. How do you calculate for potential energy? I'm I'm gonna keep asking this question because you guys keep ignoring that. Easy. Well, if, if something, I, if, if something... I lift it up and let go, equal, uh, the, well, if I lift it up and hold it there, equals potential energy. Right, if but potential. So what if you didn't lift it up in the first place? What if it already started then up there? It doesn't exist, right? Pardon. How does, how does then do gravity that doesn't exist, right? Hold on. But what if you magic. never? Hold on. What was. if you never lifted that it up in the? Name, name an what example. What if you never was. lifted it up in the first place and it started up there? How then does, you still can't prove gravity. How does that happen? Give falls. me an example. Like an apple in a tree? Water that comes from the top of waterfalls. Nobody well, lifted yeah. it. Yeah, that's because of the water cycle. So we went through this earlier. It was Milo's first example. So it's been given energy by the sun and then evaporated. It's changed state, become less no, dense, so floated up into object. the air because it's less dense. So that is a cycle, the water cycle. So it's not Nature. just up there, is it, Lewis? The water hasn't started there by magic. No. No, yeah, I'm but talking you... solid objects, like like rocks falling off a cliff. Well, a mountain formed. Mountains are composed of rocks, right? Yeah, but James... Lifted, right, so how... That, that big source James, of potential James, energy just sitting there, rocks yeah, ready to James, fall. James, how, how, does, do you, how do you calculate long, for this potential energy? How long does potential energy last before it disperses? Potential the is only... The subject is the center of the uh, Earth. Uh, That's uh, the crop uh, of the subject. Uh, Who's asking about the calculation for potential energy? You guys are using that as an argument for why things fall. Milo, so you guys... we can demonstrate it. Right, so how do you calculate... Milo, Milo, listen, can I tell you what, what I remember from my physics lessons at school a long time ago? That you, yeah, can't create, you can't create energy and you can't destroy it. You just pass it on from one to another. Great. Now, you might correct me on this, but I remember that energy was um, measured in joules. Okay. And if you have a, a 10 joules of heat, you can transfer that into 10 joules of magnetism, but you'll lose things on the way. Okay. I, am, I, am I correct up to now? 
Uh, maybe James can correct you. I, I don't know. Um... The, the, the amount of energy needed to lift one kilogram up into the air one meter uh -huh. is the same energy that will be released when you let go of it. So how do you calculate for that? Well, I just told you. I've lifted one kilogram through one meter upwards. Uh -huh. And what if you lift it there for 10,000 years? Sorry? We so what little... is the energy? What foot is the pounds, energy? In foot pounds seconds for no. matter that's up in what the What is air. the yes, equation? What is the equation? One pound, one foot in the air is one foot pound of potential energy. One no, energy what is the is 100 foot pounds of potential energy. What There's is the energy. equation? Then you have foot pound seconds that <laughs> measure torque. Where do you want to what? go? Where's gravity and torque? Where is the equation? I just gave it you, you complete dumbass. And you kept saying, where's the equation five times while he said it. He's not giving me an equation. Nathan, he is. You... He's just giving it you in foot pounds. So what is the equation then, Nathan, since you understand James so James well? just gave it to you. If you want to direct it to James, let him answer. Okay. Don't say you what's don't the know. equation five one times. One pound lifted one foot over the ground is one foot pound of potential. That same pound ten feet up is ten foot pounds of potential. There's no time on it because it can stay as a body at rest on a shelf as long as it wants. Great. That's not an equation. hundred feet up, one pound. Yes, it is. No, How is not. it not? Of course it is. How is it an equation? If you had 20 pounds at 100 feet up, you just do the math. So it's what's the equation? Pounds. It's the number of feet of elevation multiplied by the number of pounds elevated. No. And how is that energy yes. contained? How is that energy contained? Hold on, was. It could be contained was, on, on a shelf, on a rock cliff, on anything. So the does anything rest this? will be it was, body of was. Rest. Milo's getting his ass handed to him by James. Just let it happen, please. No, he's not. He's asked about 50 times what the equation is, was. He's now been given it. Okay. Let's see what happens next day, eh, was. Thank you. That's not an equation. <laughs> one pound, one foot There's in the air answer. is one foot pound. If it's two feet in the air, it's two foot pounds. If it's two pounds, two feet in the air... It's four foot pounds of potential. It's the same as one pound, four feet in the air. Two pounds, two feet in the air. James, same. did you see the equation I put in there for weight? See, there's a thing. Weight and mass are different. If you want to lose weight, you can go to the moon. You weigh one sixth of your That's right. weight. You're exactly right. Your weight mass and mass are completely does not different. Change. So what's exactly. the difference between weight so and mass? Why are you asking for weight? Weight varies. Because how do, you, how do you, exactly how do, how do you distinguish weight from mass i don't know gravity. ask nasa they're the ones who say no, if no, you go no. to the moon no, you will weigh no. one six less i didn't James. make that up so i don't explain it so you don't accept it either right no i've never been to the moon and got on a scale so then you don't accept that mass and weight are different no i know they're different how if you want to lose weight go to the moon but you don't believe you can go to the moon so how do you distinguish you do. between mass and weight? Uh, you're the one I'm asking you. So, okay, exactly, but you're saying that there is a distinct you dis mass you. is constant. No, weight hold on. You're okay, saying you're right. so we've that gone on mass to the moon. No and offense, Jimbo. Sorry. Different. We've gone on to the moon. I want we've you just... to tell me how you distinguish them. Hold on. Why? We've just got to the point you've asked about 50 times why uh, what the equation is for potential energy. He's given it. And you. he hasn't given me one. No, he hasn't. So, yeah, yeah, he has. He's given it you in four pounds. Good. It's measured by how much the thing weighs versus how high you bring it. That's how you do the equation. He gave it to you, clear as day. Very now you've strayed off it, right? So we've got an equation for how much potential energy something has when you take it to the top of the Empire State Building, right? That is the equation. There was no necessity to include gravity at all. And how is it contained, this energy? We're talking to Milo, was, right? Milo um, has made these assertions obviously. and said, because we don't know how to calculate it, it doesn't make it real. Now, we've said there is a calculation, and nowhere in that calculation is gravity. So we have a potential energy given to something, then it's released, and it reaches the equilibrium it had before you interfered with it. No gravity needed. Hey, Milo, can you ask them how the energy is contained? How's the energy contained? Thank you. I mean, if it it's a can of soup in the Empire State Building on the top floor, usually on a shelf. Right. Right. And what's what about the 
can you ask them about how energy disperses if it does at all oh well it wouldn't unless you moved it so it would remain with all of its potential energy on that shelf until you came along and dissipated it by dropping it off the edge was so we or have gravity in a way of gravity. containing energy forever yeah you can contain it on a shelf let me extreme something by the, the, rest, the potential the rest, no, force it's... acts upon it exactly so so let me let me ask you something um is the potential energy proportionate to the rate of fall if so why rate if not fall, why? Sorry, what what rate of fall i don't really understand it's not falling we've taken it to the top of the empire state building and then we've put it on a shelf it doesn't have a rate of fall but it still has a potential energy nathan you don't understand what you're talking about yeah I do it's been taken to the top of the empire state building and then put on a shelf it still has all of the potential energy I put into it by carrying it up all those stairs. But it's not falling. It doesn't have a rate of descent. Okay, go ahead, James. It stays there forever. Sorry, you just referred to a rate of descent. And there isn't one. It's on a shelf. Go ahead, James. Not James. My name's Nathan. You talked about a rate of descent. How yeah, did it start we're descending? Yeah, talking objects. Uh, sorry, Was got his question, and now he's got his answer. There's a follow-up question from us. How does it start descending, lads? What puts it in motion? Is that supposed to be some type of gotcha question? Because we agree on what put it in motion. Oh, you're going to put it in motion, so you're the cause, not gravity. No, gravity, uh, gravity is why things fall at a certain rate and why it falls in a certain direction. It didn't fall. It was on a shelf, you complete dumbo. We're talking about falling objects, Nathan. Okay. I don't think you're... Yeah, and how did they get to falling again? Oh, yeah. You made it fall by picking it up off the shelf and releasing its potential energy when you put it over the side of the balcony. That was you right, that so did that. Not gravity. You did it. You picked it up and decided to release the energy. Now, it might be the case that a television in that hotel room at the top of the Empire State Building has also had someone else put the potential energy into it. It sat on a shelf happily. Then you can potentially release all of that energy by chucking it out the window. But that would take your intervention. Gravity doesn't make things fly off shelves now, does it? Yeah, Is that, it does that's the, that's the worst, that's like the worst straw man ever. Uh, sorry, how do we get to it being in descent? What a straw man. Not a straw man. You've said it's got a rate of descent. Why has it got a rate of descent? Exactly. Yeah. Why? Yeah, why? How did it start descending? I'm asking you that. This is your example. No, 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 no. The, the question is, why is it descending at a yeah. certain rate? Yeah, why is it descending? What caused that it. to start? What started that process? We okay, you, you, you started the process. You're stuttering. You complete dumbo. Yeah, I'll tell you. You took it in your hand, the can, and dropped it over the edge. You caused it. Not gravity. You didn't, no, you, you caused it to fall, but you didn't cause it to accelerate. Right. It accelerated because it had potential energy in it. That was put in when someone took it to the top of the building. We've already established that. <laughs> Nathan, do you know uh, the, the difference? Release, the release of a, cr of a compressed spring would also have an acceleration, wouldn't it? Exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right. So Look what's at the, the difference what's... between a string and a rubber band, okay? If you pull so, a string back as far as you yeah, can, you it's pull, not going to have a force that's making it go back the other way. And, and you want to always be the imposter and say, I have nothing to do with this experiment. I'm pulling the elastic back and gravity and all these different forces are acting on it. I'm dropping a ball off the roof, but gravity is making right. it fall. I'm Something dropping a microphone, fall. but I have nothing so, to do with it. Gravity James. is the culprit and it's doing everything. And what's Please hear me out for 10 seconds. You're Please. playing the science Please and Please hear me out for 10 game. seconds. If I can't clear this up, I won't speak again, okay? But the same thing that you're saying with the spring or with a rubber band or with the string, if you have these two objects, a string and a rubber band, and you pull the string back, there's no reason that it's going to pull the other way because there's no force that you're, so the potential energy is none there. It's not going against you anything. You just pull it back. You, you, Sorry, let me just clarify that. I pull a string, I pull it, but there's no potential energy involved. So I'm pulling and there's no energy. Is that right? No, well, let me fit well, the rubber band. You have to work against some energy when you let go. It's being pulled back because of a force that was you were working against. It's the same yeah, that force. That, would, that would not be potential energy. That would be resistance, though, wouldn't it? That would be something else that you're now throwing into the mix that's different. This is resistance. So, yeah, so exactly. what is the spring? Uh, what is the shut spring? Up. Shut up, Milo. So it's resistance, something totally different that you're talking about now, Lewis. 
No, it's a... Sorry, it is. You're talking about resistance, rubber bands and springs. That's resistance, isn't it? Yeah, resistance is in that. Right. So resistance is what you're talking about. So we're no longer talking about potential energy and gravity. We're now talking about resistance. We're not talking about potential energy. You dumbass. Yes, I put both Shut up with your straw man. Chat. Shut up, Lewis. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, crap, yeah, my name's not man. Lewis, but I put both equations shut in up. if you'd like to see them. Shut up! Both what the part shut up don't you understand, Lewis? <laughs> you deaf? Shut your stupid mouth. Well, I don't have a stupid mouth. Yeah, you so do. I put both of the equations Sh in there. Shut up! One more time Potential and you'll energy. be ejected. No more talking from you. Naughty chair for you, Dumbo. Are your ears okay, Nathan? They, they hey, might Mark. be bleeding. Hey, Mark. So, Mark. So, would you agree that there's no potential energy until you press the spring down? Hey, I'm sorry. That, that, that's, can you say that again, please? I was distracted. Would you say that there is no potential energy until you push the spring down? Yes, I would agree with that, yeah. So, in the example of the brick at the top of the building and you drop in it, what what is the potential energy coming from? What, what is the spring in this example, figuratively? My issue is that you, you, there's an emphasis on acceleration. If you go from zero to something, then it has to accelerate, whether it's the spring right. or whether it's letting go of a, a bowling ball off the top of the Empire State Building. Well, let's right, clear so, up but the thing, the thing is that no, Hold up. The thing is that in the spring example, there's a mechanism, um, the spring, that is causing this, um, this uh, potential energy that you have to work against. Yeah, that's right. right? It was quite, so it was quite the, happy at rest. Right, so in the example with the brick on top of a building, there is also something that you have to work against to build up this potential energy. Listen, I have a, a, a different <clears throat> interpretation of what gravity is than the rest of the gentlemen on the panel. Okay, but I'm, I'm saying there is a, there's a spring in the example of uh, the brick falling off the building. The same, um, yeah, yeah, without listen, that I... mechanism, there is no potential energy. So without the spring being pushed down, there is no potential energy. Well, so I, I, what is that mechanism? What is the thing that we're working against um, when we bring the brink, brick up a building, increasing its potential listen, energy? To the what are we working here. against? I, listen, I don't accept okay. the interpretation of gravity like the rest of the gentlemen do on, okay. on this panel. So you're talking to the wrong person here. I, All right. I, I know, if, something's, if something is happy in its state without any external forces it'll stay there until you exert something on it so that pushing a um a ping pong ball underwater and letting go is as much as as, as lifting a bowling ball upwards and letting go it's looking for a happy medium but i i don't want to use the word gravity because that involves so much more equilibrium equilibrium, equilibrium, is, not, but <laughs> equilibrium is not a force yeah. Well, uh, if I can clear up one thing here about the force of acceleration downward and the 32 feet per, per second squared to terminal velocity. The terminal velocity is different on almost every object that's dropped. It depends on the shape of the object and other factors. So how do you control? How do you control for all those different factors? By it, by uh, uh, one thing, you know? pretend that's that's uh, that's the standard. No, you're saying that um, things fall at different rates because of different factors. Yeah, so, drop a sheet of plywood off the roof. See uh -huh. if the wind doesn't catch it and uh, see if it falls at 32 that's, feet per second squared. It won't exactly what behave. Saying. That's exactly. what I'm saying. That's not what I'm, what I'm saying is that these factors need to be controlled for in order to isolate why oh things fall. Yes or no? In, in order for you to prove things gravity. Things won't fall if you don't take elevators to the tops of buildings with cans and balls and other stuff and drop them off. Microphones don't fall unless you knock them or you held them in your hand over air and open your fingers. Yeah, but you understand that You're potential energy. All kinds yeah. of things to make yourself an imposter from your own responsibility. No. It's it, really, it, I'll give this, this example. I go into a bar, I grab a glass off the bar, hold it out over space, and drop it and tell the bartender, oh, look, that wasn't me. It's gravity, you see. It's just. <laughs> I'll do that to the rest of your glasses, too. When you call the cops, I'll tell them it's gravity broke all the glasses. That was so fucking silly. It's, Look, it's the there, is no, there is no potential it's actually energy. Not, it's actually not silly, though, because unless that's what you're, you're saying. 
chocolate, you don't know anything about anything. So a body I think at rest, stays at rest, oh, and the force acts upon it. And to get a, a force acting upon something and to measure it, it takes someone like lifting bowling balls yes. up to a Change. beam on a ceiling and and feathers and hooking them there to quick release mechanisms. James. Then pretending they got there by magic and the guy who pushed the button uh, said, "Wow, look, it's gravity." Oh, forget the scissor lift. Forget people's involvement in setting up the experiment. Let's look at it like it just happened. Though those those things were in midair there, and let's do our math now. Can I just uh, ask you, James? Just... You cannot have potential energy unless you're working against something. So in the spring example, the only reason you have potential energy is because you're working that's, against that's spring. That's completely wrong. So the bowling what ball is... and feather example. Uh, oh, the fact man. is, gravity is fabricated, a creation <laughs> non-existent, and and math all to hell. To be made you a reality, need, and that's the game that's being played force. here. You need an opposite force to be um, being work against the opposite your force. Would be the weight of the brick. The opposite. No, no, you still have an, you still have the an weight of the brick is not a force. Without potential energy lifting it up. The weight of the brick is a force when you've got to try and lift it. Well, what if you don't need to lift it? What if it started up there? Oh, it did. Complete Dumbo. Things don't magically start in the air. That was what Jimbo just said for the last two and a half minutes was. Did you not listen to oh. a word he said? No. So you've just asserted, they. what if they just started there to begin with? What if we just pretend we didn't take them no. up there? Listen. Give us a minute. The spring is rocks gravity. Start up on mount, rocks up on mountains. No one put them up there. They've been there for hundreds of thousands of years. How the hell do you know? Were you there hundreds of thousands there. of years ago? I was there. I Dumbo. saw it. Were you there? It's a semantic point. Yeah, it's a moot point. Oh, really? You complete dumbass. You were there 100,000 years ago to see who put those rocks there, <laughs> were you, Dumbo? <laughs> Don't laugh. You're a dumbass. You've just asserted something that you can't back up in the slightest. Come on. Uh, what do you mean, come on? You're going to show me the time machine where you went and saw who put the rocks there? From space. Dumbass. If I show you, I would have to kill you. Yeah, uh, exactly. So you can pretend that you have a fantasy illusion about how the rocks get there, right? <laughs> Oh, dude. Chill. No, oh, dude. You have no idea how those rocks got there. None. You can tell me a fantasy just so story about how the rocks got there, oh. but you have no idea. None. What potential energy put them up there? Yeah, that, that's right. Just change the subject. What got them up there? You don't know. Yeah, I don't know, that's Dumbo. That's what you're asking. You don't know. I don't know. So don't assert that you do. Okay. What potential energy could have put them up there? Who cares? We will never know the answer to that question, idiot. So what's the point in going on this merry little dance was? Go on then, carry on. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, let the so, adults speak. Without, idiot. The, without the spring, there is no potential energy. You understand? So without gravity, there would... Sorry, without the spring. So if man doesn't make a spring, there is no such thing as potential energy. That is the most ridiculous thing you've man. said so far. That's a straw man. That's it, no, your statement was ridiculous. That's Without a, a man-made man spring, there is no potential energy. Man. That is the most ridiculous statement you have made on this panel so far. Why, why do you intentionally um, misunderstand things, Nathan? I don't misunderstand things. You said, if there is no spring, there is no potential energy. That is stupid statement. Simple. Because I, were we talking about springs and pressing them down earlier? Without a spring, you said there is no potential energy. Your statement yeah. is ludicrous. You are no, Milo, a buffoon. It, it, it's, he makes perfect sense. Milo's making perfect sense. No, he's it, not. Without the spring, there is no potential energy. What the hell does that mean? It means absolutely nothing. No, it, it, no, it doesn't. I, I, I wasn't making a general. I wasn't making a general rule with that statement. So why are you taking it that way? Shout out to, is it Alexi? Alexi Bond, I can't read that writing against that background, man. Thank you anyway for the super chat. Much obliged. Alexi Border. Alexi Border, thank you. From Nathan. So in this spring example, where you press the spring down and increase its potential energy, if there is no spring in that example, there is no potential energy. Do you understand? Wow. That's amazing. So if you're driving at 50 miles an hour and then you remove the car, you're no longer moving at 50 miles an hour. Wow, that took a genius to state.
I, I'm falling off my chair from that revelation. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I, I just so needed you to point that out. That if something doesn't exist, your example falls to pieces. Wow, that's amazing. So, so clever of you to point out that in an example with springs and resistance and potential energy, if you take this spring away, then you've got nothing. Amazing. Right, Nathan, spring can you describe against... potential energy to somebody? Can you describe the potential energy to somebody using the springs? Well, there's also resistance involved, isn't there? Oh, I'm asking you if you can explain it. I've just said there's a problem there because there's also resistance involved, isn't there, Lewis? No, so there's not a problem. My name's not Lewis, but it's not a problem if you're just trying to describe potential energy. It's actually, it actually makes it easy because now you have two potential energies or forces uh, to describe this uh, potential energy. Potential energy is just describing two forces. Okay. Exactly. Two forces. You can't have you can't have a potential energy without two forces. So what two in the forces? spring example, you have the force from the spring. Uh, that would be resistance. So there's one. Uh, excuse me. That would be resistance. So there's one of the two. What's the so, other one? So you have so you have the spring acting against your thumb. And no, you have... you're not touching it. So it's just where it is, and it has a resistance value, which you start to have to act against the resistance. Right. So so when you press against when you get when you press against the spring. You increase its potential energy. Yes or no? So we've got resistance and potential energy. So there's the yeah, two. Your finger. So no gravity required again, just resistance and potential energy. Well, brilliant. So we've got two, the two different forces that are required with your spring, and there's no gravity required whatsoever. That's amazing. <sighs> yeah, James. No. James, go ahead. No, Nathan's my name. So we've gone through the two forces in your spring example. No gravity was needed. My name's not no, James, yeah, it's that's Nathan. That's a different example. So what are the we're, two forces? First of all, that was we're your example. Potential your energy, example. So you can understand what it means. That was your example. Not a different example. Your example. Just got ripped to pieces, though. No, it's not ripped to pieces. So one is the spring, the resistance in the spring, and the other is your thumb's force pushing it down. These are two forces. Excellent. So no gravity required then, exactly as I just asserted. So those are your two forces that are involved. Gravity doesn't come into the equation. Excellent. Thank you, Lewis, for making my point. So great. Nathan, so we agree that there's two forces, correct? Uh, not He's gravity, not though. Excuse me? No, no gravity involved. We haven't discussed any gravity in those two forces. Now that you understand what potential energy is, let's bring it over to the one where we're talking about lifting up bricks. Okay. Right. So you're, uh, you're sorry, we've just been talking about springs, and at no point did anybody give me any sort of proof of gravity. So why are we now moving on well, to bricks? you're giving so I don't your get own it. proof of gravity was that, by was that just a fail? potential energy. Sorry, was that well, spring example just a fail a Itself. When you say uh, mass is not a force, you're wrong because if no, I put 200 kilos on your chest, tell me yeah, it's that's not weight. a force. Yeah, weight. Weight is a force. It's called a newton. Oh, oh, weight is a weight force. Mass, so that's mass times gravity. What would you rather have, a thousand pounds or a thousand kilos? Uh, depends chest. on what planet I'm on. Doesn't matter. If they're on your chest, you won't be breathing for Hold very on. long. That's an interesting answer. Right. Yeah. Sorry, bear with me. Sorry, Luke. Sorry, Jimbo. Mass Sorry, bear with me. Bear with me. He said it depends on which planet he's on. How many planets have you been on? Just this one. So why you would you assert that? Machine, dude. Hold on. Why would you assert that it makes a difference then if you've only ever been because on one? Because mass is a description of the object. A weight is a force that that object is um, pushing down on depending on the uh, environment. Right. Right. So and also weight is also terms. dependent. So let me weight ask, is let also me ask, dependent on where ask. you are on Earth let, also. Let so weight can vary on in uh, different situations, in different I was, areas I was on talking Earth. to Lewis. Yes. So why yes. would you assert that it makes a difference on which planet you're on? Because if you had uh, those kilo of that mass on your chest on Earth, it would be six times more than that same mass on your chest on the moon. How do you right, know? Jen, have you been to the moon? To the how the how, have, how the do you know this? Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Let, let me have this, Nate. Okay. This so, is going to sidetrack the whole thing. Guys, on, wait, no, no, this is absolutely it. Your guy's belief is that the gravitation or the gravity is caused by the center of the object's mass, which is the Earth, that pulls down on the object. So the yeah, only way that you guys can prove that there is this mass, the only way you can prove it, not with maths, but with real-world application, would be to get yep. a big planet and to bring no, it up. Not the only way, I'll, 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 I'll tell is, you an easy way. way. The Anthony. only way you can do it is to mathematically calculate for it. Anthony, and I'll, I'll tell you an easy way. doesn't prove anything. Anthony, Anthony, I'll tell you an easier way to do it. Go on. The Cavendish experiment, which right. you guys have never attempted we're to. Really, we're really not I'm laughing myself off my chair now. We're really not going to go over the Cavendish experiment. No, we are. No, we are. 
Because that's the crux yeah, of all this. No, it no isn't problem. the crux of all this. Hold it on. doesn't do what he tells it does. We are... I don't mind. Hold it on, does. Anthony. He wants to go through the Cavendish experiment, so let him. Let's hear the valid scientific hypothesis. Start with the null, then the alternate. Hang on a minute. What about the observed phenomena? I've done all this before, Nathan. I've Hang done on, all this. Hang on. Well, what was the observed phenomena? That's where well, we start, well, is it not? Well, we'll get that in the dependent variable. Okay. Okay, so on Earth, there's a downward acceleration force. Yes. Or... Sorry, I didn't want you to start with an assumption. I wanted you to start with a hypothesis, not an assumption. Okay. Do you, do you understand what a scientific hypothesis is first? Let's just get that out of the way. Just detail to me what a scientific hypothesis will contain before we actually get your scientific hypothesis for the Cavendish experiment, in quotes. The, a scientific hypothesis would involve an assumption. No, it would assume a cause for a cause and effect, and your presumed cause would be validated by scientific experimentation. So the only and assumption is your assumption of what is causing the effect. Exactly. So let's That's start there. As you say, it must have an assumption. It's actually a presumed cause. So in the Cavendish experiment, what is the independent variable, the presumed Nathan, cause? Nathan, the hypothesis is an assumption that you want to test. It's an assumed cause. I'm asking exactly. you, what is that assumption. assumed? What is the assumed cause in the Cavendish experiment? The independent gonna, variable. I don't want to move on until you agree that a hypothesis is an assumption. It's got a, no. It's not in and of itself an assumption. A hypothesis has an assumed cause, which exactly. you validate. Assumed. Shut up, and you validate or invalidate that presumption through experimentation. So right, you but first, the Milo, I haven't finished. The first okay. thing you do is propose a hypothesis which has an alternate and a null. And at the end of experimentation, you will verify one or other of the hypothesis, the alternate or the null. That is confirmed or validated or invalidated at the end of the experimentation process. First, before we get there, we're not going to assume anything as the outcome. We will just assume what the presumed cause is. That would be the independent variable. So for the Cavendish experiment, what is the independent variable in the experiment? Nathan, at the hypothesis stage, you are assuming a cause. Yeah, I just told you that, dumbass. Now tell me what your cause is. What's well, the independent so variable? What so, is it? So let's. So we have to agree that a hypothesis is an assumption. No, a hypothesis has an assumed cause. <laughs> You don't yeah, see Nathan the irony. You don't he's saying no, but he's saying yes. You don't see yes, the, ir you don't see the irony in you don't see the irony in saying that you assume a cause and saying that it's not an assumption. You don't you don't understand that. A car has a steering wheel. A car is not a steering wheel, but it has a steering wheel. A hypothesis okay. is not an assumption. It has an assumed cause. How many times <laughs> do you have to have this explained to you while you laugh over me like I'm wrong? A car can have an individual element, a steering wheel, that does not make a car a steering wheel. A hypothesis can have within it an assumption, the cause. I'm asking you what your assumed cause in the Cavendish experiment is. What is your independent yeah, variable? It's about the fifth time I've asked you, what is it? What's the independent variable in the Cavendish experiment? In quotes. In my hypothesis, I assume... Not yours! Cavendish! Do you understand? You've brought up the Cavendish experiment. What is the independent variable in the Cavendish experiment? Not yours, his. Okay, so in the Cavendish experiment, the assumed cause is the mass of an object. Okay, and what was so the, the force? Hold on, hold on. The force what's the, the dependent, dependent variable? variable? Hold on, hold, what's the dependent variable? Just the thinking. force between the objects. That's You've just told me that's the independent variable. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <sighs> Let's try that I again. Said... What no, is no, your presumed... No, no, I said the independent Sorry. variable is the mass. So the independent the variable in this cause. experiment is I'll the mass. I'll take you through it. I'll take you through it. The assumed cause is the mass of the objects. Okay. Well, that's your cause then. So nothing to do with gravity. Mass of objects is the cause in this causal relationship. That is your independent variable. That, sir, is the cause. Uh -huh. Mass and of the objects. Dependent, 
And the dependent variable... Yeah, it doesn't matter what the dependent variable is. We've just established that the cause is mass. Okay. And the force between the objects is the dependent variable. No, the dependent variable would be your observed phenomena. You didn't give us that. I was hoping we'd get it in the dependent variable. So what's yeah, your the dependent, dependent variable? The, no, 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 no. The dependent variable is the, is the variable in the experiment that you do not vary. Uh, sorry, you think a variable is something that you do not vary? Wow, it's Brenda number two. What a complete dumbass. So you don't think you are trying to vary and manipulate the dependent variable. It stays fixed. You're not supposed to vary and manipulate the dependent variable. Really? So you're not trying to manipulate a variable. You're Nathan, not you trying only to manipulate one of the two. It. You cannot Let me just manipulate get it clear. both the independent. You're not varying this variable, correct? You don't have to vary a variable just because. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. You don't have to vary a variable. You're dumb. You're so dumb. Yeah, when, when a variable is not variable, it's called a constant. You complete retard, Milo. Why are you humiliating yourself in front of nearly 220 people? You're just as Nathan, bad as Brenda. You are Nathan, as dumb as Brenda. What is, it, what is the definition of a deep... Don't ask me anything, you complete dumbass. It's the effect. Exactly. Do you vary the effect? No, you, or you vary, just vary the you independent vary, variable. You vary your dependent variable by manipulating your independent variable. You vary it. Yeah. No, I, I think I think Anthony. I don't care what you think. You're a dumbass. You think you don't need to vary a variable because you're a retard. Anthony agrees. <laughs> Anthony agrees. <laughs> uh, Anthony, if he's agreeing with you, which I don't think he is, then he would also be called stupid by me. He's not agreeing with you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, all I said was the dependent variable is the effect. The independent variable, scientifically speaking, is what you vary to prove the effect exactly. is what you're. Right, but you exactly. have to. You have to vary it. You can't have a constant. Yeah, you can only vary the independent variable, though. Yeah, that's the one you vary to cause the effect. But that effect is a variation, Milo. You complete retard. This Nathan, we're at the hypothesis stage. We yeah, don't... you don't have to tell me what stage we're at. I was the one who asked you for your hypothesis. And so far, in your cause and effect relationship, mass is the independent variable. Therefore, mass is the cause. Nothing to do with gravity. Nathan, we don't know if the dependent variable will even be affected by the independent variable. This... Really? So you don't know what the effect of Cavendish's experiment will be? What will happen? You just asked me... You are you so stupid. We're still at the hypothesis you don't know. Stage. You don't know the outcome of the experiment. You don't know what happened in Cavendish's experiment then. Wow. You asked Amazing. Me for the Why'd you bring it up? You asked me for the hypothesis, Nathan, and now you're, you're, you're jumping to the conclusion. We're... Well, you already know the conclusion, right? This has been systematically experimented on, right? <laughs> and according to you, the independent variable is mass, not gravity. Yes, yeah, so when you... So the cause is mass, you complete idiot, according to your experiment. Yeah. Yeah, you've established the cause is mass. So we give mass potential energy, and then we release it. Gravity doesn't come into it. Yeah, gravity is the force in the experiment. Sorry, we've established the cause is mass. Okay. Yeah, so your cause is mass. Why you're now asserting it's gravity is because you're a retard. No, mass causes gravity. No, mass doesn't cause gravity in the experiment. Yeah? That's not what your dependent variable is. Gravity is not the thing you are causing the effect of. No, sir. What's the dependent variable in my experiment, then? You tell me. What's the dependent variable? What's the observed phenomena? The force between the objects. That's what you're observing. Where do you observe it? Where In the experiment. Oh, so it's a self-affirming prophecy, then. You can only observe the phenomena inside the experiment. Wow. Very natural. So you're saying that science can only um, experiment on things that they first observed. Massive th uh, shout out to Th Flat Earth New Zealand. Again, another one I can't quite read. Thank you very much for the super chat. Yeah, you are making your experiment your observed phenomena, sir. So what you're saying is that an experiment cannot produce uh, observed phenomena. No, you first have phenomena. to observe a phenomena. That's step one. 
not step three, step one. So what is your observed phenomena? Not the experiment, that's the last step. So the first step, observe a phenomena. What are you observing? Do you understand? What are you observing? It's a simple, straightforward question. You're, 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 you're putting forth a false prerequisite to an experiment. False prerequisite? This is your yeah. example, my friend. What is your observed phenomena yeah. in your experiment? Step one of the scientific method, also your dependent you're... variable. What is it? It's not step one. What is your dependent variable? The force between the objects. How many times do I have to repeat it? Are you Where do you observe this natural phenomena? Do you need to observe a natural phenomena before you do an experiment? Yes or no? Yes, it's step one of the scientific method. Observe a phenomena. So how did... So Sorry, how did... Did, did I answer your question? Yes, you need it at step one. How did we discover x-rays? Sorry, the... don't ask me a question. I am still asking you for what your observed phenomena is in the Cavendish experiment, and you keep telling me that it's the effect of the experiment. That's not step I'm... one, is it? Observe a phenomena. I'm... Step one, what did you observe? Step one is not the observed, is, is an observed phenomena. That... Oh, right. So we've got a science denier on our hands. No, you... Yeah. Step one, observe a phenomena. Are you now denying science? Are you denying x-rays? Uh, we're not talking about x-rays, Mr. Strawman. X-rays are, are... Sorry, we're not talking about x-rays, Mr. Strawman. What's the strawman? Yeah, x-rays. We weren't straw... talking about x-rays, now were we? We were talking about gravity and how your quote-unquote experiment has an independent variable that is mass, not gravity. That would be the cause. You claim okay. it's gravity. That's the cause. That's what so you they... say. Despite the fact you're proof of it, not proving it. You don't even have a dependent variable. You have observed nothing. You are claiming your observation is contained within the experiment. Failing to achieve step one. I'm pretty sure I'm muted. So Not muted. Just, what, I'm just handing okay, you your so, own ass. Okay, so what you've done here <laughs> is created a rule. The rule that you've created is that an experiment cannot be done until after... And observe phenomena. That's step one, not step five. Step one, observe a phenomena. It's not my method. It's not my rule. It's called the scientific method. Correct. Correct. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's wrong. Oh, really? Well, that makes you a science denier. Something we get called a lot, don't we, Milo? That makes you a flat-out science denier. You got to find interpretations wrong. And observed phenomena can come from the experiment. This so step five is your step one. That makes no sense, Milo. This is Anthony. This is why. Not I... Anthony. My name's Nathan. Just because I'm ripping you a new asshole doesn't mean you need to appeal to Anthony. Step one is not step five. Okay, well then let's just talk about the step. Shut up. Step, talk about Shut up, it. Lewis. Don't come in to save That's Milo the Lewis. retard. I'm just. Saying, I want to move. You're not just saying one more time. One more word. No, I don't want to move along, James. I don't want to move no, on no, because but... these guys these guys don't know um how science is conducted because if it was conducted the way they say we would not have a lot of things we have. We have scientific method. Step 1 is observe a phenomena. No. <laughs> yes. Don't just nay say you science denier. Step 1 observe a phenomena. You can't change it. That's what you think it is, but it's and That's not what I think it is. It's what it is. It's not though. Okay, right, well then so you're a science denier. What the first step is then on the science that you accept to be the method. Anthony. No, show, you show us what step one is in your scientific method. Ask a question. Okay. That's the first so what, step. So what will be the question? The question is, does mass cause a force? Okay. Objects. So that's the question. Have, what would you? What would you? What? So. Let's, uh, what uh, so, so a little bit. What, huh? Let's let's hypothesize a test that you could do. Yeah. To do can cause anything. Excuse me. Not mention gravity, Anthony. He's asking well, about sorry, mass. I, I missed what he said. He's saying I can devise an experiment that causes that explains mass, and in the Cavendish experiment, he's got the exact same thing. He's not explaining gravity here. 
Of course I am. I, I missed what you said, so you'll have to paraphrase it. What's the um, experiment you would devise once you make your observation? I want to I want to drill down the point that oh. I said first, beginning. The first step is to ask a question. Okay. That is so the first step. Not, observe, not make an observation. All right, so your question is ask a question. So what's the question? The question is, does mass cause a force between objects? Okay. So, what's the experiment you're going to do? The, the Cavendish experiment. We, you know what you know what these answers are, Anthony. So it's never been repeated. The Cavendish re experiment. They got all kinds of toys and oh, labs on, and in on, physics on, departments, stop, and it's never been repeated. Stop a sec. So your your uh, your test is the Cavendish experiment. What is the independent variable? Are you really going to take in me your... through all this again? Yeah, come on. You're the one that's telling us what the scientific method is. Let's apply it. The independent variable is the mass of the objects. Right. So in the exper no, 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 no. I'm going to explain. So in the independent variable, I am varying the mass of the objects. So right. I might use a 5-kilogram object versus a 1-kilogram object. I might use a 10-kilogram object versus a 5-kilogram object. What did Cavendish so use? That's I all it. I'm varying. Do we agree that the independent variable is the cause and the effect is the dependent variable? Okay, yes. So right. what, is so, the, what is the problem? So your you're going to write so the is cause right. of the experiment. Your would cause be the is mass. weight. The thing you are varying and manipulating yes. is weight, not gravity. Okay. So the cause is weight. How many times does this have to be explained to you, dumbass? So what you're saying means that the Cavendish experiment proves weight, not gravity. No. Wait. No, the Cavendish experiment proves the question. Uh, the question that I asked that mass, in fact, does cause a force between objects. So, how are you going to manipulate the mass then and show the causative effect with the dependent variable? How would you manipulate the mass, Anthony? Put different masses in it. Okay, then. So, why right. are you asking me that question? Because the independent variable is mass. But if you were testing for gravity, your independent variable must be You're gravity. You're not testing for gravity. You're... Oh, right. Sorry, guys. This was all a complete waste of time. Cavendish isn't testing for gravity. So I don't know why we've gone Did through all this. Did you hear my question? Did you hear my question? So you just asserted something. You said Cavendish isn't testing for gravity. That's what you just asserted. And I've said, oh, right. We've Are wasted our time then. Deaf? Just parroting guys... dogma. Just Are you guys dogma. literally yeah. deaf? Or right, right. So, so your point is that the um, the masses attract each other like magnets, right? Yes. And you're going to independently I have, to give, the, the I have to give this force between these objects a name. Right. I can so call it you... force A if you want. If you don't want to call it gravity, call it force A. So when you um, do your test and you, you have different masses, right? Um, let, let's say that you get this attractive force of which you speak. If yes. I then go and verify to see whether I could repeat and validate your results and I didn't get it, would that comply with the scientific method? Of course, but the, the, the well, truth well, is that well, you, you would see a result that is, Hang on, that is said... uh, the same as mine. You... Yeah, but the problem is we don't see it. You do, though. I no, mean, you... the Cavendish experiment isn't validated because we don't repeat it and get the same results. By who has repeated it and not gotten the same results? Just look on YouTube and see for Cavendish experiment. So you're telling me that point. someone has repeated the Cavendish experiment the proper way that it's supposed to be repeated, and it, they didn't see a result. Correct. There is enough evidence that goes both ways to bring the results into jeopardy. And my question is... You know why it's a lie, people, Anthony. Well, why are we arguing it if, it if it would be a lie? Are you saying that because we're deliberately like to argue. No. There's enough evidence to suggest the idea that the Cavendish experiment does not validate up. I'm pretty sure that there's if more evidence. Good, we could about, do it about, every yeah. day and twice on Sunday, the experiment. So do it. It's Have I, you done I, it? I, it's it bullshit. Do I wouldn't waste my time on that garbage. So then be quiet. But all of you be proof quiet. and glow believers should be able to quiet. set one up in a heartbeat. You could be quiet then. If you don't no. want, if you think it's bullshit. Right to say something. It is bullshit. Okay. Children so do it at school. Stop talking. All right. So listen, it, when you put, when you conduct this experiment, you see yeah. the objects move towards each other. This is something no, you that you guys no, you cannot no, you ignore. Don't. No, you don't. When that, when you repeat I that ain't experiment, never seen that. you fail to reproduce the same result. You must be blind. No, Excuse you're me. deluded. No. Okay, so Nathan, uh, Anthony, 
you have to you have a couple of things that you guys have to um explain why is it that when you increase the mass of the larger object the force also increases between them but we this haven't seen is... any evidence of this force it hasn't been validated to be true we haven't observed that yet by who anybody nobody has repeated the cavendish experiments and got the same results so well, what you're saying is that we hang a... a golf ball next to a wrecking right, ball let, let and me have the, the, let, me, the, let me rephrase that some people have repeated it and got the same results and they're dubious because other people have repeated it and not got the same results Anthony, most people that repeat it get the same results. That's what validates the whole experiment. If, if yeah, a the minority, fact that other people fail, no, to no, get no, 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 no. Hold up. If a minority of people repeat this experiment and don't get the same results, that's a minority of people. Milo, but have you done the why, experiment? This is why constant experimenting is necessary. Have you done the experiment, Milo? Who's talking to me? Uh, Mark, have you done the How experiment? No. Have you? No, I, neither have I. I've never seen it done either. Have you ever seen it done? Yeah, I've seen it done. <laughs> can, can you exp can you elaborate on that? What did you what you observe? Is it so, on a video you can show us? Yeah, man. I mean, I don't want to show it on YouTube right now because I don't think uh, Nathan wants. And, and you're sure there's no air current, static electricity, or other things no, involved with the materials you're using? Uh, James, sorry, James, Milo. this is the thing with sorry science. To Milo, you have sorry to, to interrupt. control for all sorry, these sorry things, Sorry to interrupt, man. Milo. I'm I'm happy yeah, for. Man. If you can dig out the video, I won't present it, but everyone else in the Hangout can watch it so that they know what you're yeah. talking about, though. So if you can dig it out, I'm happy to keep this going a bit longer because sure. it's a good subject and you're doing really well. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather keep going. But if, no if, if you can dig out the video, I'm happy for them to be bit of dead air. Now, when I show you guys this video, I want you guys to go beyond just denying it. I want you guys to try to explain. Well, if it's a crappy video with static that's potentially affecting it, air currents and other stuff, then we should be allowed to call bullshit if it's yeah, bullshit. Right, right James, yeah. but if it's done in a vacuum chamber, then, then how can you call it bullshit? Yeah, and we haven't got anything to fear either, Milo, so go ahead. Keep going. All right. Yes. Yeah, can you guys see? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is the this is the quickest experiment that I can I can find. So it's a minute fifty. All right, um, I'll try to speed it up. No, a minute fifty is not too much to suffer through. I'm not going to speed it up. This I'm not speed it up by much. Really? Okay, so I just want to pause here and explain the experiment in the first place. So, do you guys this understand? This is CGI. What... Is this a CGI set up here? Let's get no. to the experiment. This is not this is not CGI. This is an actual um, video. So why does it I... look like a CGI setup? No, why does it look like it's like made on Blender or something? What's wrong? Am I? I'm not seeing something here. James, just hang on. Like CGI okay. to you. Hang on. James, the only thing the only thing wrong with you is your eyes. Okay? Yeah. So, so let me explain something. Do you Got guys under, do you guys understand why the um, experiment is suspended? Yeah. Can we it's see? on a string that can twist. Oh, yeah, on. but do you know why? So, sorry, sorry, Milo. Yeah, because it has to, to do be this. suspended I know by it's something. loads against you at the moment. Because hold on, why? Jimbo. You, you tell us, Milo, why it's suspended. Oh, hold on, hold on. All right. You're now uh -huh. asserting... Hold on. You're saying that it's... You've had it leveled at you that it could be CGI, but you've not really dealt with that. And now you're saying you understand that it's suspended. Because I haven't played... Because but... I haven't played the rest of the video. I know it's not CGI. Okay. Can you just show us that it's not then? Because the it's only a minute long. I just Rather want than explaining to explain the experiment first. Just hear me out. We know the experiment. Play it. For We've just you don't had understand about the half an hour of it. Can't you just play it? It's a We're minute long. We're all idiots. Just play the yeah, damn first movie. Play it. Play it. Play yeah, it. You're, you're definitely an idiot because you thought it was CGI. So Just play it. We haven't seen it. This and you're giving CGI. us your explanation. Yeah, CGI, all we guys, want but... you to do, why are we having to have a row about you just playing a minute long video for the panel to watch? What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid. I want so to play it. Just play it. All minutes and 16 lame. seconds. It is playing. Play it. Still now he's put motion on it. Get your knickers in a knot. No, <laughs> he's got motion on it. No. Look, he's going to let it rest so that it doesn't move. Do you understand? Oh, right, it, okay. doesn't, it doesn't begin to move again until he oh. applies that other larger mass. How so, do we know it's um, magnetic? You can't blow on it. There's no air moving. No, Go away with no. this garbage. Are you kidding? Who is it? This you want to call this a scientist? <laughs> I tell you, go right to blazes with it. <laughs> right. Can I respond? Who are you trying to kid? Jen, can I, I, can I respond? 
Maybe Anthony, a five-year-old wine. Let Anthony, let hey, Anthony Jack, respond well, this, to this, it. This one's good too. This one's good too. So, so now, um, this person just put a a, a object with a certain amount of mass on this scale. What is the string made it, of? Watch, what does what? it matter? Hold on. What? They twist. They're affected by humidity. They're affected by a lot of things, including wind and air motion. So, uh, what is the string made of? Is it wire? Is yeah. It string? Wire. Wire is not going to spontaneously spin because of heat. You understand that? It has to be attached to something. It won't spontaneously spin. It has to be attached to something. It won't Anchored. spontaneously spin. It has to be attached to something. How is it attached? You can be quiet now. No, no, well, that I'm was why I asked. That was the, hold on, Milo. That was the criticism that he leveled at you when he thought it was CGI. What's it attached look at that. to? You're seeing the whole experiment here. What's it look attached to? No, not really. We're not. We're not. Where do we see what it's look attached at that. to? Look at that. Look at that. Did I see that? We're not. Hang on. There's two things that we're not seeing. I don't see it okay. attached to the ceiling. That's one of them. And the other thing is, what's on the bigger picture is the summit beam. It, let's just say that there was a dodgy baller and he was blowing on the experiment. Careful editing. It was moving. It's just careful because... editing, that's all. Okay, so how about this one, man? Careful Both editing. So far. Somebody doing an equation on screen. Yeah, because they're they're actually going to predict what the outcome is before. Wait, this is uh, the second time you've do done experience. this and make the outcome what they want. Of course, right? How can they do that? You realize that if a flat earther did an experiment, anything like this, they'd be ripped a new one. Why don't you do Would the you Cavendish experiment yourself? Well, well, well we have them. Do you know when I do experiments, I try to show the whole thing. I don't, I don't skip parts and and don't show the whole this, thing. Whole no, thing. These are really really experiments. It's this almost is not embarrassing. A, to this sit does here not and have it. a valid hypothesis. No, the Cavendish yeah. is not an experiment. It's not scientific. It doesn't have a valid hypothesis. It does. No, it does not. The mass of the object causes a force between the objects. So you're right. causing I'm a force, are hypothesis. you? You're causing a force. Excuse me? Your dependent variable, the thing that you ob observe, is a force. The dependent variable is a force. Where Correct. do you observe this? In the experiment. Only in the experiment? So it's not a naturally observed phenomena then? Is the experiment supernatural? Yeah, it's you built it. You're not observing a natural phenomena. You're building an there, experiment there and calling it open. a phenomena. That's what you're doing. And it'll damn turn. Who's kidding who? That's is nothing. The experiment the, what you natural. showed is zero zip, not a zilch. It's not Just say it for the audience's benefit one more time. The Cavendish experiment is not a scientific experiment. It does not have a valid scientific hypothesis at all. Image control. <laughs> it's a toy. Image control. It's a circus sideshow is what it is to convince religious zealots that they have gravity. Damage control. It's not damage control. It's fact. Your experiment is not a scientific experiment. It's a sideshow circus. Is it supernatural? You've Even made you it. Tried doing it's it. not natural. It's balls suspended from a <laughs> shed ceiling. Do you think that's natural? You show me where we find naturally occurring dangling lead weights, you idiot. Nathan, oh, are you... Not Nathan. You don't need to use my name. You just need to tell me where I can see this naturally occurring. Are you saying it's supernatural? Yes yeah, or no? Yeah, it's not natural. It's not no, a naturally occurring phenomena. Yeah, you can't show me where you observe this phenomena outside of the experiment itself. It's not you don't a scientifically need to observe valid a phenomena hypothesis. You have not observed a phenomena. You don't have to observe a phenomena. Yes, you do. That's the first step in the scientific method. You're just a science denier, taking us on a merry dance. This is just going to be a non-stop circle jerk if we carry on. We've reached the point where you've been demolished. We've got to the point where even if we do accept your non-scientific experiment, your independent variable is mass, not gravity. Yeah, it's just a joke. This is just a sideshow circus joke. Nathan, the Ooh. first step is ask a question. Not no, observe a phenomena. You can just make something up if you choose to. You can use a philosophical science if you choose to. But that's not the scientific method, sir, whether you like it or not. According to who? Oh, Jesus wept. You're an idiot. You've got no proof of gravity. 
The first step of the scientific ex uh, method is ask a question. So what question are you asking? I've already answered this. What's the question? Does mass cause a force between two objects? That is the question. So where do you experience that? When have you experienced it to ask you that question? You don't need to because that's not... Oh, we can just say it happens, right? We don't need to actually experience it. We just say it happens. It's, not step. it's a question. We just say mass attracts mass. That's what we do. We just say, does mass attract mass? If there's no observed phenomena. There's no reason yeah, to make this question. assertion. It's a we just question. ask a question Thank and you. then prove that it does happen in the experiment itself, in the sideshow circus. That's step one. That's Is step one. not a fair enough question, though? That is step one. So Nathan, I don't understand. Nathan, I don't know what to tell you. Step Nathan, one is to ask a question. Nathan, I don't know what to tell you. Nathan, to be fair, he, ha he has done this. Um, but what I want to do is respond to the video that he's brought up, if I can. Sure. So you brought up a video showing the Cavendish experiment. Um, there are thousands. If you bring up the, uh, if you click the thumbnail in the, um, in the, in the chat, you'll see my screen. Hold up. <laughs> yep. 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 What I want you to do before the ne or before the next hangout, because we're right at the end of this hangout now, and I know he's going to wrap it up soon. But what Are I want we doing you to do is... No, tomorrow. But what I want okay. you to do is I want you to go and watch this one, this video, Flat Earth Cavendish Debunked by Patrick Shank. Or you can find this, it's Brian Mullins' video, which you can find very easily. Um, in this video, we've got a very young-looking Brian Mullin. So if I find a picture of him, look how young he looks there. But tell me why he's wrong in this video video through it because i don't want that's not his experiment he did that's not him in, in the beginning he, he didn't actually conduct that experiment so i don't know he's, expla he's explaining why it's debunked so what no, I want no, no, to... no, no. he hasn't done the experiment i want you to tell me why this is wrong no anthony i'm telling you right now he has not done the experiment oh, he's just expressing neither a form of you. Of denial and hold on and hold on by that standard that hold no on pressure. hold on sorry by that standard Neither of you, Milo. So everything you assert is wrong. You haven't done the experiment. No, I just uh, no, 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 no. That was your standard. He hasn't done the experiment. Therefore, what he says is wrong. You no. haven't done the experiment. No, 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 no. Therefore, anything you assert about this experiment, Milo, is wrong by your own Milo. standards. You Milo, understand that's a straw man. That's not Milo. what I'm saying, Nathan. I'm saying that he hasn't debunked it because he no. hasn't done it. And you haven't confirmed it because you haven't done it. It works both ways, you complete dumbass. Yeah? If you want to assert it, I you can assert it, so can I. Milo, Anthony's well, invited you to do something, will you do it for him? Um Yeah, what oh, Milo? Is that Mark? Can... My, listen, Milo, if you're gonna assert that he doesn't prove it wrong because he doesn't do it, I'm gonna assert that you don't prove it right because you've not done it either. But I've already I want said you to that. Do... Right, but listen, He's what I want you to it. do is you guys listen. Done it. Just listen, I want you to watch the, the first hell? All I want you to do is watch the first two minutes of this video and explain why Brian's wrong. Can you yeah, do that for me? Listen, day. Anthony. Listen, Anthony. If I have two magnets and you're telling me that magnets attract each other and I tell you they don't, and you tell me, well, put them next to each other to see if they do, and I tell you, and I tell you, no, I don't have to do that. Do you understand how I can't debunk magnetism if, unless I okay, put so two magnets next to each other? Watch the video, Milo, and come back. If the link in the ball has got a magnetic property to it, and these it are doesn't. magnetic, Sorry, then they're going to attract. Hey, Anthony, can you pop the link in this side chat, and I'll put it in the for the audience's benefit, so they can go away and happily study it if Milo chooses not to. And what we'll do, Milo, is because you know, like you know, how Rumpus doesn't do things that he says he's going to do. What I'm going to do is charge you now with the task of explaining why this is wrong in the video. So I'm next time, right now, it, next I'm time we see you. After you've considered the video, I want you to. I'm going to ask Anthony. you: Can you explain why he's wrong? And then Anthony. you can come back with me and tell me the reason why he's wrong. Is that fair? Anthony, you're Anthony you're all, you're, all you're all you're saying is that he's he's uh theoretically maybe probably debunked it, but he hasn't until he and conducts the experiment and, himself himself and sees it. And he did a lot of things. Apparently, I've uh, listened to some some uh, very respected physics teachers praise his, his work. And uh, I was studied some uh, studied some of his work, but mostly what I was interested in was how he determined this gravitational constant. Kevin just apparently had a lot of property, a lot of money, and he set up an experiment. Kevin just built this box, 
this wooden box on his property. Something looks something like this. Okay? And in this box, there was a pulley with a rope leading outside the box. Something like that, a little handle on it. And it, what hung from it was this thing called a torsion rod. Looks something like this. And on the ends of the rod were these large lead balls. And on the inside were these smaller lead balls. Something like this. Pulley right here. And he used lead because it's very massive, it's very dense. And he apparently, according to the, the history, he, he knew that he had to get away from the, the, the box because his gravity, you know, his mass, would affect the experiment. You know, assuming that this is correct, that the force of gravity it is, you know, the, the, there's a force of gravity between any two masses, not just the Earth and us. All masses have a force of gravity on each other, or create a force of gravity on all other masses based on this equation and the, the uh, proportion that Newton came up with. So he somehow set up some telescopes that went back to his house. You know, keep his house off the board, just assume his house is down here somewhere. So he could observe this experiment. And somehow he calculated big G from this. Okay. Well, when I started researching this, I said, okay, well, let's, let's see some examples of a modern day torsion rod experiment that somebody's built that shows how this works. another set of lead balls inside there. Uh, this experiment really is very difficult to get to work and a, a technician has sorted apart so because we got so frustrated. Because we got so frustrated. However you could measure the period of oscillation of this and from that get the all the properties you want, the torsional constant. And that enabled him to measure big G, the gravitational constant to an accuracy of 1%. And nobody improved on that for a hundred years. And nobody improved on that for a hundred years. Well, I couldn't really find one. I uh, actually had a lot of trouble finding one. Actually, one of the physics professors that was praising him had a little model that he held up and was, and was joking that his TA couldn't get it to work and got frustrated with it and gave up. And I'm thinking to myself, over 200 years later, we don't have models of this, or uh, repeats of this experiment all over the place to, to determine Big G. It didn't make much sense to me. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully for sharing this debate. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you hated the show, then you know exactly what to do. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you have not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day.